What's up, YouTube, man? Y'all already know who it is, man. This is your boy, State of Steez, though, man. As y'all can see from the thumbnail, I'm about to show y'all how I got this thing to tucky tuck tuck. Oh, yeah. Look at them up under there. And it can go lower, too. But before we do that, I need to move this Tahoe out the way. Move the Jeep out the way, too. I already got the Infinity back here. Let me show y'all something. So if y'all been watching my channel for a long time, y'all probably remember on the Infinity, I got the $300 Mako paint job on here. And I know a lot of people talk crap about it, but I'm pretty sure I got this done over probably a little bit a year ago. And it ain't peeling at all. Like not around none of these little seams. Around here, none of the little tape lines, around the, the lights. And it really don't have no orange peel at all. Like, it still looks good. That's the crazy thing. So I just want to give my update on this because I know a lot of people bad mouth it, but hey man, my boy Lucky Wheels and Deals hooked me up on that. And as y'all can see, that thing's still glistening. So let me go ahead and get these cars moved out the way so I can show y'all how we can tuck and buck. That wide body, that wide body Tahoe on them eights. But yeah, back to this. Um, and if y'all are tuned in on my old channel, y'all already know that the motor is running on the car. Um, the only issue that we had was uh, that it didn't have oil pressure at the time, which shout out to everybody in the comments that was giving me ideas on what it could possibly be and what it was. It was two things. One, it needed oil pressure, new oil pressure switch, which is crazy because that switch was working on this engine when I picked it up, but stuff happens, man. I, all of a sudden, it didn't it didn't work. And two, it needed to circulate. Like it needed way more than the two or three seconds I had the car running. I didn't even have it running that long. And I remember somebody saying something about, oh, it don't take that long for it to circulate. Yeah, it does. It's just when the car, when you go get an oil change, it takes like one or two seconds for it to circulate. This car has a whole new oil pump gear that wasn't purged, so it wasn't no oil running through the oil pump because that was new on top of the filter. And this is a whole new top end on this car. Everything's being rebuilt on this top end. So oil had to circulate from the new oil filter on this car, the new uh, oil pump gear, and the top end on here. So keep all the negative comments to yourself if you haven't been keeping up with this build of this car. So yes, it had to circulate for a little bit longer than your typical car that just got an oil change in it and it needed a new uh, oil pressure switch. So the only thing we're waiting on now is the turbo piping, which I have over here. I got all the turbo piping. My boy Preston is gonna weld all that up. He's gonna do all my welding for me, for my turbo piping and to get my crossover uh, welded up on the car. Cause that's why I was so loud when I started it. And we got a new drive shaft. That's already connected up in there. New drive shaft, man. With that big boy, that big boy yoke on here. I got two of them. Actually, I got an extra one. This ain't no shade tree stuff right there, man. Check that name out again. Big boy yoke. So that's a forged yoke that we got on here. It's way thicker than this, this stock one that was on here which is a piece of crap like why would somebody even put this on your car like having this connected to the end of this this ain't nothing but there's like weak links that you're creating on the car and i'm pretty sure this thing probably had crazy vibration crazy vibration when it was driving but i don't know how crazy the vibration was because i really never got a chance to really drive the car when i first got it because it was a piece of crap i pretty much drove it probably like five times and parked it and this was been sitting for a whole year. 
But this is why y'all hear the squat life, which I can squat it way more. I have a lot left on my coilovers where I can squat this thing. But I'm not gonna squat it all the way till I get the car running and have all four weight in the car with my seats. And if I go speakers and everything in here. But as y'all can see, I'm gonna take the wheel off. The first thing I did to squat this car is get me some QA1 coilovers. I heard people say use G body springs. I heard people say use 96 SS Impala springs i didn't know they i needed 96 ss impala lowering springs or stock springs a g body stock springs a g body lower springs i didn't know so i just went the best way that i knew to go is with coilovers where i know i can adjust it the height up or down so how i squatted mines first thing first QA1 coilovers. Y'all can go to G Body Springs or the 96 SS Impala Springs. Y'all can do that, but the way I did it, the big boy way, QA1 coilovers, number one. Two, get you a wheel that has the right offset that's gonna fit in here. My wheels don't poke out. Them things sit in there. And there ain't no spacer or no adapters in there. This wheel is cut to fit to this car. So that's number two, get you a wheel that's gonna fit your car. Get the offset that's made to cut for that. And you gotta do a little trimming. I'm gonna take the wheel off so y'all can see, but this is new trim too. I was telling y'all about it, I messed it up. If y'all go check out my old video, I dropped my wheel on here, but oh well. But I still need to do a little bit more cleaning up and trimming in here. I need to take that, that boat back. I got poking out of here. I still need to push that in there some more, but let me take the wheel off so I can show y'all. All right, we got the wheel off of that thing. And this is a 26 by 10 with a five inch lip. No, I didn't have to shorten the rear end. No, I did not have to notch the frame. That's the good thing about these, um, these box shavings, man, they already come with big old fender wheels, so I won't have to notch the frame or mini tub it like a lot of the, the G body guys have to do. And I still had like two two more inches back here, back here to go in the car. So I can easily put a, a seven inch lip on this car with without even um, notching the frame. And that's just comes with it when you get the wheel that fits your car that's custom made to fit your car you don't have to do all that cutting and all this crazy stuff except on g-bodies they just got small fender wheel bone these b-bodies man these box chevys you get yourself a good old custom wheel that's cut to fit your car you'll be good to go but y'all can see i pretty much just uh I just cut the lip, man. I cut it and I, I just whammed it back on there. Is it the best? Probably not, but y'all can see where the wheel is kind of rubbing up here at the top, but something's going on with this rear end. Anyways, where it's just rubbing. Which it don't rub on the other side like that, so. Some is janky going on with this rear end anyways. But it's just like everything else on this car that's janky. But that's the rear end is leaving. I'm getting a nine inch. So I'm not even worried about that. But like y'all can see, like I said, man, I just cut a little of the trim off of there. Split it and just bammed it back. Because the, the lip is gonna stick out a little bit farther on here. So Hey y'all, just, just that simple. Get yourself some coilovers. Y'all can go to one of my old videos. I show when I installed those, the part number and everything for those. So y'all can go find my old video, which I probably just put up right here. Get your wheel that fits your car. And 
trim and, and and cut your fender well. You know what I'm saying? It's that simple. You'll be in the game squatting like your boy, man. And uh, like I said, man, the car is about to be running. Well, it's already running, but on the road soon, man. Like I said, all I need is my piping welded up for the aluminum piping and my exhaust piping. And y'all already know me, man. No, I'm not about to go trying to weld on some or do something that I don't know nothing about. I lead that stuff to the pros. And y'all can hit me up on IG. This is for a, uh, a TH400 forge uh, slip yoke. And if anybody need that, y'all can hit me up on my, uh, my Instagram. I'll ship it out to you for a hundred bucks. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can get on my my Instagram with there. I post a lot on there. And y'all can see more of the drive shaft too on my Instagram. I posted that on there as well. And I'm still waiting on my interior, man. He's still trying to I guess I guess get done with that. So I don't know, man. This whole COVID-19 has been messing up a lot of stuff, man. So there it is, man. Y'all got any questions? Y'all can drop in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about it. The whole squad in the car or any other questions you got. Hey, hit me up on IG. I get in them comments, man. And don't forget to like, share, and comment and subscribe.